Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over how the primary wheels work in DaVinci Resolve so you can get started in with color grading. As you can imagine, making these kinds of videos takes a lot of time. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can donate 1, 5, 10 or any amount of money to keep these kinds of videos free in the foreseeable future. Thank you very much and enjoy the tutorial. Now we have a shot right here with a lot already on it, converts it from S-Log3 into Rec 709 with a cool look over it. It's my Nebula XGR locked for s log It also exists for all other cameras if you're interested. I'm just gonna use it instead of a CSD. I'll name the load LUT. Now to start adjusting things, there are two things to keep in mind. You wanna do it before you transform the color space or after. Usually it's better to do it before you transform it because you preserve a lot of information. Because when you do it after you transform it, you transform it into a smaller color space and gamma, and then you start to push it around into certain colors. That's why it works much better beforehand, because when you do it beforehand, you can move it around in a much bigger space before it gets converted into the smaller output space. To add a node before the LUT or CST, we press Shift S. This will add a serial beforehand. You can also right click, add node, serial before or serial after. Now we're going to name this one Exposure and we're going to add one behind it that's called White Balance. We'll both use the primary wheels for this. For the Exposure, we're going to fix our Exposure. In the scopes here you can see that the highlights and the contrast is pretty well rounded up because this lot converts it into the proper proportions, I would say. I really like this look but I would want the blacks to be a little bit darker. So what you can do, here in the primary wheels you have four wheels. You have your offset, which is going to be your overall exposure. You have your gain, which is going to be your highlights. We have your gamma, which is going to be your midtones. We have lift, which is going to be the shadows slash blacks. Also here you have a shadows and highlights slider. Now these two shadow and highlights sliders can come in useful if these wheels won't quite get you the exposure that you want. Up here you'll find the contrast and the pivots to pivot the contrast from more towards the darker side or more towards the lighter side. Left is lighter, right is darker. As you can see it keeps the same contrast but slightly pivots it towards it. You can very much see that on the scope. If we put it to the right you see it pivots all the detail to one side. And that's very useful. Here you'll find your tent tint to change the tint of your image and the temperature. I would not recommend using this because it's less precise and lo actually lowers the quality of your footage. So it's better to use your offsets and your wheels for that, which I was showing a bit. Also here you will find your saturation slider. You wanna add some saturation or decrease it, you can. Now first we're gonna be doing our exposure and I'll show you where I start. I think the exposure is overall quite nice. I would maybe want it a little bit brighter. And I would want the shadows to be a little bit darker. While the midtones come up a little bit. And we created a little bit more contrast, as you can see, before and after. This before and after. It's only a minor difference, but this shot really doesn't need much adjustment. You can use the bar below its wheel, as you just saw me do to control all the individual channels at once, white, red, green, and blue. But if you want to say, hmm, the shadows, I want a little bit more blue, I want some blue in the shadows, now you can grab this wheel, which is very sensitive, as you can see, it goes very quickly, or you can pull on this little number and add a little bit more blue in the shadows. So let's say we add 0 0.3, now the shadows are a little bit more blue. Now I would recommend you do this in the white balance node instead of the exposure node because this keeps it nicely separated. So we're gonna reset this, put it back to zero, roughly 0 0.4, 0 0.04, and we're gonna go in the white balance node and do that real quick. I think the whole shot is a little bit too warm. So we're gonna, so we're gonna actually remove a little bit of red and also a little bit of green. And we're gonna slowly lower it down to find the right amount. It's a little bit too pinkish still so we're gonna add a little bit of green and we went from this to this. As you can see it does affect the exposure a little bit but it gives you a nicer result in white balance. Now as I said I want a little bit more blue in the shadows. 
we do right there and a little bit more red in the highlights. I'm going to be very careful and now we went from this to this. I will remove a tiny bit more blue from the shadows and we went from this to this which is a little bit more of a balanced and contrasty image. We went from the LUT alone to fixing our exposure to fixing our white balance. Now the great thing about the primary wheels is their ease of use. They're very easy to use and very beginner friendly. So I highly recommend using these if you're starting out. Now the main issue with the primary wheels is that they're linear. And in the next part, I'm gonna show you how you use the log wheels in the same way, but how they are superior to the primary wheels and how you can use them to leverage the quality of your log footage even more.